piano gate scandal. Wow, what's all this about then? Let's have a look. Did your thing as all of us in your cameras? For TV allowed? as well. No. We're not allowed. It is a legal thing because this is our right that we're protecting. And we're in a free country, mate. That's true. We're You're not in a free country. China now, you know. And now it is a global phenomenon. Because Brendan Kavanagh, the pianist, he's been going on lots of talk shows. He spoke with Piers Morgan. He's made like 20 videos on this. He keeps pushing videos every few hours. And it's getting to the point where it's very much against China. So rather than an issue of these few people, it's become an issue around China. So yeah, the main issue was about imposing Chinese law in Britain, which just really didn't make any sense, to be honest, because there is no such law in China, you are allowed to film in public places. If you're in public, then there is no privacy. So you can record people. There is no image rights. But one thing that they might have been getting at is that in the train station, they regulate that you are not allowed to film or photograph the public piano for any commercial gain. And that's what he was doing. He was making a live stream using this piano and it was being monetized. So it was for commercial gain. You know, this was all about privacy, really. She didn't want to be on film. And many people will be like, well, hey, why did you not just walk away? Why did you approach Brendan? That's really what I want to talk to her about. So here's what she has to say. What exactly were you doing at St. Pancras train station? What were you guys all doing initially there? Supporting a friend in helping a Chinese media company to film celebration content for Spring Festival. Uh, we just want to sing a song next to the piano. Where exactly did you first meet Brendan? Did you know him before or anything like this? We don't know him before and we didn't know that he is a YouTuber and who has 2 million followers now online. And so uh, on the day, actually we arrived first. The piano was under repair by the time we arrived and we're waiting for our mates to come. So Brendan uh, went to play the piano first. And like, as I said initially, that we don't know that he is famous on YouTube. Actually, I just thought, okay, you know, he's just someone just play the piano because we see many people that just go there and play the piano for a few minutes. But uh, he actually, uh, you know, he stayed there and for a long time. That's why I, I, I didn't come to him to ask him like how long he's going to be playing. Why exactly did you ask him to stop filming you? Why did you not want to be part of it? I know you mentioned before uh, in the live stream about some kind of NDA. Was it maybe, is it to do with your filming with the TV or was there other reasons? Why, why did you ask to stop filming? Yeah, there are a few reasons. Um, I didn't really stop him and filming or you know anything like that and you can see from the video that actually I'm polite and I went there politely and then I just you know just want to clarify with a few questions with him and so and the reason why you know he make us a bit uncomfortable you can see initially that we're happy and like we're playing pianos as well um, but uh, after that uh, Brandon um, called us Japanese and then my friend actually corrected him uh, we're Chinese, we're from China, but uh, he still keep calling us Japanese. And so this is actually really uncomfortable for any of us, right? You know, you're from Britain, you correct him that you're not from other countries, but he still keep calling you that. You know? Hello, are you, are you from Japan? No, I'm from China. Oh. Anyway, we're here with the, the Japanese TV crew filming about public piano. So. And second of all, while he was playing the piano, he was trying to get one of our lady to dance. There's a whole Japanese team of group. Oh, can you dance? Can you do a dance? Let's get this girl to dance. Yeah, can you dance? Um after we rejected him because we don't really feel comfortable initially and he just said the British girl is more fun. Whatever. I think the British girls are more fun. And this is not a fair comment, honestly. For all women, um, regardless where they're from and who they are, he shouldn't really, you know, comparing or, you know, say, say things like that. Third point, um, yeah, you mentioned about the an NDA. Genuinely, uh, we just want the content to be a surprise for the Chinese New Year, especially for our friends and family. So we don't want, you know, this is out already before the uh, release date. And for people who are familiar with how TV works, many of you would agree and should, one, one shouldn't take the liberty of the content to release before the TV release date. You mentioned about him calling you Japanese uh, repetitively. I know he said afterwards on his own 
YouTube account that he was referring to maybe another film crew or something like that. So do you think, was this just like some kind of mis misunderstanding possibly then that you guys thought, oh, he was talking about you um, and then he was actually talking about someone else? If you rewatch the part again, um, he asked, are you from Japan? And we said, we're from China. Then uh, the other friend, I, th I think his name is Jim from a Japanese production company. And he also clarified, no, 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 they're Chinese. And um, I work for the Japanese production company. So I think he should have aware that we're not from Japan. Now, if he's misunderstood, you know, um, he come to us and ask one of our girls to dance with him. Um, we don't want to dance with him. And then he still said, British girl is more fun. So like both things make us feel like he's not a like, nice person. Uh, and he also kept referring to you guys as, you know, you're working for the Chinese government. Is, is that true? Is there any truth in that? Absolutely not. This is a false accusation. How come somebody say you're a Chinese person and then, you know, they're a communist and they're from Communist Party and then they work for Chinese government. Um, I studied in Britain and I worked hard to create my own company here. Right now I help overseas international students get their dream job offer. So your job is basically just helping students, nothing to do with anything to do with the government at all. Then. Yeah, my job is, I, I would say it's not complex. Yes, that's the thing, you know, because he's um, kind of, you know, seeing his videos afterwards, he's just criticizing you guys as like, you know, working for the government is criticizing China. Really, there should be something about, you know, you, you guys are just normal people. We're, we're Chinese. Not Chinese has to, you know, all work for Chinese government. <laughs> then people start to hate us. Yeah, and I, I just want to know about that, actually. So how has this affected you personally? Um, what kind of reactions have you had online? I feel quite helpless and, you know, scared of going out and scared of putting my voices and my face out because there are so many trolls on the internet attacking me. And um, I have received a lot of criticism and threats. People, you know, ask me to die. For me, as someone on YouTube, as uh, I'm putting myself out on this platform, um, I know I'm subject to a lot of criticism and hate, and, and I'm aware of that. But for you, you're not at all. This is just your normal day. You were just out there and he's making lots of videos. He's like making fun of you guys. Uh, this is really affecting you and you know you, you didn't want any of this at all um so yeah it's totally not on and yeah well i i hope you are able to move on from this uh, at some point and yeah i really appreciate you talking to me and um yeah thank you so much i, I really appreciate it thank you luke thank you for interviewing me